Good morning everyone. So in this section we are going to cover IR. So this is June 2024 magazine, monthly current affairs magazine of Vision IAS. So we are going to cover IR section into this one. First news is related to India, the global peacemaker. So recently there was a summit and the summit was on peace in Ukraine. The title was Path to Peace Summit. This was held in Switzerland. So Russia-Ukraine conflict is going on and to settle that down and to promote peace, the summit was organized and this was organized in Switzerland. From Indian side, the Secretary of Ministry of External Affairs participated. See, India have a very diplomatic approach to this Russia-Ukraine conflict. We support peace but we also support Russia. That's why you will see that our stand is very very diplomatic in such circumstances. Similarly, whenever there is a conflict between Israel and Palestine, even in that case, our stance is very diplomatic. So, we just maintain that we are supporting both sides. Another example, whenever there is a conflict with, between say Russia and USA, again, we have good relationship with Russia, we have good relationship with USA. Okay. Now, as far as peacekeeping missions are concerned, so United Nations sent various peacekeeping mission and India was the first country to send all women contingent in the UN peacekeeping force. This was done in 2007 and this mission was sent to Liberia. As of now, India has deployed its armed forces in nine countries, in nine countries for peacekeeping forces. So these were the important issues related to this entire summit. Now, apart from that, recently, the Arab League, Arab League also up adopted a declaration and that declaration is Manama Declaration. So Arab League has focused on UN peacekeeping force. They have said that UN peacekeeping force should be deployed in the Palestinian territory until a two-state solution is implemented. Two important things. A. What is this two-state solution? So two-state solution basically means there will be two separate countries or two separate states, one for Israel and one for Palestine, so that the conflict between Israel and Palestine can be addressed. So the demand of this declaration is that UN peacekeeping forces should be deployed till the time this, this solution is implemented. Now, Arab League was formed in 1945 in Cairo in Egypt. The headquarters in Egypt in Cairo. What is this two-state solution? Two-state solution simply means establishment of two separate and independent states, one for Israel and one for Palestine. So, this was the issue related to this entire news. Next is rise of mini-lateral. See, mini-lateral basically means two, three countries are coming together and forming a group. So, this article or this news highlight that there are more and more minilaterals rather than multilateral. Multilateral basically means multiple countries are coming together. Minilateral means few countries are coming together to form a group. So, Chinese aggression in Indo-Pacific has promoted the emergence of a squad, a minilateral group between USA, Japan, Australia and Philippines. This one is different, squad. Then there is a quad group also. Quad consists of USA, India, Japan and Australia. Okay, so two important things. Why these millilaterals are coming? Means why there is a rise in millilateral? Reason is the progress in multilateral group is very, very slow. Because there are multiple countries and therefore the progress or consensus or the decision making is very slow. Be it WHO, be it World Bank, be it IMF or be it WTO. These institutions need reform, but reforms are not implemented because the number of countries are very high and therefore they are not able to focus on the common agenda. Apart from that, there is a rise of minilateral to ensure the regular supply chain. For example, the world is heavily dependent on China for its supply chain and that's why the countries are forming alternative groups so that they can reduce dependency on China. One such example is 
chip for semiconductor alliance so this is a grouping by four countries that is japan south korea taiwan and usa to reduce dependency on china for semiconductor chips so that is why multilaterals are being formed because the growth or the progress in multilateral groups is very very slow next news is related to india bangladesh relationship so recently bangladesh prime minister sheikh hasina visited india and that's why this entire india bangladesh relationship was in news so as a part of her visit to india various new agreements were signed and india and bangladesh shared a vision for digital partnership green partnership digital partnership basically means we will cooperate in digital matters green partnership means to promote environment and maritime cooperation and blue economy so for this purpose they they basically means india and bangladesh decided to cooperate apart from that the npci that is national payment corporation of india and bank of bangladesh are going to cooperate with each other for digital payment npci is national payment corporation of india it is set up as per the payment and settlement system act payment and settlement system act of 2007 act of 2007 and it is a joint initiative of iba that is indian banks association and rbi please understand one thing rbi is a regulator of digital payments and this is being done using npci in fact the products like upi what is upi unified payment interface upi is a product of npci only okay now coming back to india bangladesh relationship so the trade between india and bangladesh is roughly 14 billion dollar bangladesh is india's biggest trade partner in south asia and india is biggest india is actually second biggest trade partner of bangladesh in asia the trade is roughly 14 billion dollar now understand this amount is below its potential that means there is very high potential we just need to cooperate with each other and need to promote more trade now one more thing if we talk about india's overall trade so as of now china is our biggest trade partner china is followed by usa with china we have huge trade deficit trade deficit basically means trade deficit trade deficit means our import are much higher than our export with china we have trade deficit of roughly 85 billion dollar that is the trade deficit with usa we have trade surplus trade surplus basically means we export more to usa and we import less from them so trade surplus is roughly 36 billion dollars in fact out of to- total top 10 trade partners of india only with the usa we have trade surplus with nine other countries we have a trade deficit so that is something which is quite problematic apart from that there are certain challenges in india bangladesh relationship for example one such challenge is river water dispute for example water dispute related to tista river so we need to solve these issues another challenge for india is a rising role of china for example recently india and bangladesh decided to conduct joint exercise and the name of this exercise is china bangladesh golden friendship 2024 so chinese army will hold its first military exercise with bangladesh and this is the name that is china bangladesh golden friendship so china's rising role in bangladesh is going to create problems for india apart from that india is focusing on caa that is citizenship amendment act and as a part of that act we are trying to find find the illegal immigrants and bangladesh is the shows of it is one of the shows of illegal immigrants into india so what will happen to those illegal immigrants will we deport them back to bangladesh will bangladesh accept it so that is something which is going to create problems in our relationship in future apart from that there is a ri- rising radicalization in bangladesh which will create the law and order problems in india and the impact of ca which we have already discussed next is related to g7 so recently g7 summit was held in 
Apulia in Italy and India was also invited into the summit and India participated into it. So this was the 58th G7 summit. Two, three things. A, G7 was set up in 1975. It does not have any permanent structure. That means there, there is no permanent headquarter. And European Union, even though it is not a member of G7, it attend the summit. The easy way to remember the members of G7 is Jews, GF, that is Japan, USA, Italy, Canada, England, England, that is basically UK, Germany and France. So, one important thing is that neither India nor China is a member of G7 group. Apart from that, previously it used to be G8. That means even Russia was there. However, because of Russia-Ukraine conflict, technically when Russia took over Crimea at that point of time, Russia was expelled from this group. Now, there were few important development as a part of this G7. For example, one such important development was B3W. So, this was announced in 2021. What is this B3W? It is Build Back Better. Build Back Better. So, this was announced to promote the 15 trillion global infrastructure. 15 trillion global infrastructure by 2040. One more thing. Recently, India has also announced its goal to be 30 trillion economy. 30 trillion economy by 2047. That means the goal is to be developed country by 2047. As of now, our economy is roughly, roughly 3 trillion. Okay, that was one such initiative, B3W. Second initiative was announced in 2022 and it was PGII, that is Partnership for, Partnership for Global Infrastructure, Global Infrastructure and Investment. So, direct straightforward question can be asked that this PGII or B3W are initiative of, so these two are nothing but initiative of G7 group. It is a group which was set up in 1975 in a response to energy crisis. Energy crisis. There is no permanent headquarter of this group. Previously, this used to be G8 and now after the exit of Russia, expulsion of Russia, it is G7. Now, apart from that, G7 group also launched Apulia. Apulia, if you remember, Apulia is the place where the summit was organized. So, this G7 group launched Apulia Food Systems, food systems to promote food security. Food security. So, that was third such initiative. Fourth is the energy for growth in, for growth in Africa. So, this is also an initiative by G7. Now, the objective of this initiative is to provide alternative finance. Alternative finance or investment alternative to, to China. That means, the countries are trying to be alternative of China because China is playing a crucial role in the Africa and that's why these countries are planning to provide an alternative to China. In fact, the FATF, that is Financial Action Task Force, is also an initiative of G7 Group. So, FATF, Financial Action Task Force. Answer in comment section whether India and Pakistan are member of FATF or not. Now, on the sidelines of this G7 summit, the Indian Prime Minister who attended this summit met the President of France and that's why this India-France relationship was also in news. So, both countries focus on Horizon 2047 Roadmap and Indo-Pacific Partnership. So, a very simple question, straightforward question can be asked. What is this Horizon 2047? So, this Horizon 2047 is based on three pillars. Horizon 24, 2047. A, it is between India, 
and France. So the first pillar is that there will be partnership for security and sovereignty. Security and sovereignty. That is something which both countries will focus on. So basically this is about Indo-Pacific region. Second, there will be partnership for planet. For planet, that means for environment conservation, for sustainability. For example, India and France played a crucial role in ISA. What is ISA? International Solar Alliance. And third, third pillar is the partnership for people. For people. So this component basically focus on the migration and mobility. Migration and mobility. Okay, so these were the three pillars of this Horizon 2047, which is a kind of partnership between India and France. In terms of role of France, understand that France is India's second largest arms supplier. Second largest arms supplier. Russia is largest arms supplier to India. In fact, France supply roughly 33% of the weapons. Apart from that, both India and France are cooperating for various space missions and one such space mission is Trishna. Trishna, this is going to be a joint initiative by India and France. India and France. And what is going to be the objective of this initiative? Objective is Earth Observation. Earth Observation Mission. Observation Mission. Okay, so these were the certain important development between India and France relationship. Apart from that, the India-Eurasia relationship was also in news. Now, why Eurasian region is in news? A, because of rising conflict. So there's a conflict between Russia and Ukraine. There's a conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan because of this Nagorno-Karabakh region. Apart from that, the role of China is increasing into this region and the priorities of USA is also changing. For example, USA decided to exit from Afghanistan. Now, because of that, there's a space and that's why China is now occupying the space which has been created by the exit of USA. Apart from that, because of this Ukraine war, there was three seas initiative which was in use so that's why this this region is quite important now with eurasian countries india need to promote its trade relationship for example with russia with russia we have set a target that we will increase our trade to 100 billion dollars 100 billion dollars by 2030 that is our target apart from that we are trying to improve our connectivity with the Eurasia, Eurasian region and that is being done through INSTC. That is International North-South North -South Transport Corridor. Transport Corridor. This is international. So we are trying to improve our connectivity so that the trade relationship can be strengthened. However, the issue is that the progress of such initiative is quite slow. Next is India-Japan relationship. So again, this was in news because of this G7 summit itself. So both countries that India and Japan highlighted the strategic, spatial, strategic and global partnership. And global partnership. See, nowadays UPSC has started a new type of questions series. Basically, they will ask a statement or they will ask a term that it was in news and it was in news in the context of so you just need to remember that this special strategic and global partnership is between which countries so it is between india and japan why it was in news because of its 10th year that means it, it is completing 10 years apart from that both countries are focusing on the Pacific, Indo-Pacific region, Indo-Pacific region. Both countries, that India and Japan, are also conducting various military exercises. Now, as far as the trade relationship between these countries is concerned, our trade, bilateral trade, is roughly 
22 billion dollars again there is very high potential this amount is very very nominal and in 2011 2011 both countries had signed a trade agreement that was comprehensive economic partnership agreement sepa was signed in addition to that in 2022 in 2022 indo japan that is india japan clean energy partnership was announced clean energy partnership india and japan are also the members of quad that is a grouping of four country india and japan are also the members of malabar exercise malabar exercise apart from that japan is financing the bullet train project bullet train project bullet train project is basically a high speed rail high speed rail which is between mumbai and ahmedabad japan is also facing the problem of aging population aging population that means their population is now aging they don't have much young population to work what india can do in this case india have young working age population so we can be a supply of the working age population for japan so these were the important development between india and japan next is related to nuclear weapon arsenal so basically sipri that is stockholm international peace research institute released yearbook and that yearbook highlighted that there is a rise in nuclear weapon development and deployment now as per this report russia and usa they account for roughly 90% of nuclear weapons even india's nuclear weapon arsenal has increased from 162 to 172 again you need not to remember exact number just remember the trend that it has increased now in the context of nuclear weapons a few treaties are important one is ctbt that is comprehensive nuclear test ban treaty so it ban it ban all nuclear explosions all explosions or nuclear explosion on earth then there is npt that is non proliferation treaty that we don't have to promote nuclear weapons it should be noted that india india have not signed either of these india have not signed ctbt india have not signed npt that is non proliferatory non proliferation treaty so that is something which you have to remember next news is related to india italy strategic partnership india italy strategic partnership so italy was the host of the g7 summit indian prime minister participated into the summit to represent india and on the sidelines india italy relationship was also highlighted prime minister of italy is maloni from indian side prime minister modi participated into this event so both countries reviewed the progress and they decided to focus on cooperation between india and italy in global and multilateral initiative one such initiative is india middle east europe economic corridor that is imec again the objective is to promote connectivity connectivity another initiative was instc which we covered in the previous topic now india italy relationship or the partnership between these two country was given the status of strategic partnership in 2023 that means italy is our strategic partner this status was given in 2023 and italy is india's fourth largest trading partner in european union fourth largest trade partner trade partner in eu after after germany that means in eu germany is our biggest trade partner then belgium then netherlands and then fourth one is italy apart from that both countries are also collaborating for migration and mobility migration and mobility basically it will allow people from these two country to migrate to each other country for work and for higher education next is related to in this x initiative why it was in use because it completed one year anniversary what exactly is this in this x in this x is nothing but 
इंडिया यू एस डिफेंस एक्सिलेशन इको सिस्टम सो एज द नेम सजेस्ट बोथ कंट्रीज विल कोऑपरेट विद ईच अदर टू प्रमोट द डिफेंस पार्टनरशिप एंड दिस इज फोकसिंग ऑन डिफेंस इनोवेशन एंड दिस इज एन इनिशिएटिव अंडर क्रिटिकल एंड एमर्जिंग टेक्नोलॉजीज सो इट इज एन इनिशिएटिव ऑन क्रिटिकल एंड एमर्जिंग टेक्नोलॉजीज दैट मीन्स ऑन न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी बोथ India and USA will collaborate with each other, and that collaboration will happen as a part of Indus X. So that is why it was in news. Next news is related to Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity. So recently there was a ministerial meeting, and this ministerial meeting was held in Singapore. Now this IPEF, IPEF is an initiative. which is supported by USA and India have also joined certain parts of this IPEF now there are few important outcomes of this IPEF meeting in Singapore and these outcomes are clean economy agreement clean economy basically it focus on reducing carbon emission it also focused on fair economy fair economy that basically means transparency it focus on cooperative work program cooperative work program work program which can be referred as cwp so it can be asked that cooperative work program is an initiative of so it is an initiative of ipef so the focus of this program is on reducing emission intensity emission intensity emission intensity basically means we will reduce less carbon emission intensity apart from that ipef also focused on operation of catalytic capital fund capital fund and what is going to be the focus of this fund this fo- this fund will focus on infrastructure projects infrastructure projects now understand one thing ipef was launched in 2022 India is member of IPEF USA is also a member of IPEF IPEF have four pillars one pillar is trade second pillar is supply chain that means we will reduce our dependency on china and we will diversify our supply chain third pillar is clean economy clean clean economy basically means we will reduce carbon emission and fourth pillar is fair economy fair economy basically means it will focus on transparency so a it will improve the taxation system and it will reduce corruption so important thing is that india have joined these three pillars that is supply chain clean economy and fair economy as of now we are observer in this one observer in this pillar and the last news in ir section is colombo process So recently India chaired its first meeting as a chair of Colombo process two important things a what is the colombo process so it focus on the migration of labor so it focus on the management of management of overseas employment overseas employment overseas employment basically means the migrated worker so it consist of 12 countries 12 nations from asia india is a founding member as a founding member recently it was in news because india chaired the first meeting as chair and so the international organization for migration international organization for migration whose headquarter is in geneva so this colombo process was organized in that headquarter in fact international organization for migration provide the administrative support to colombo process so these were the important development in the ir section if you have any doubt please ask in the comment section thank you and that's all for the day